We beat the rest of the world at gardening. Well, I think we do anyway. And where it shows most is in our front gardens. Look at Mr. Benham, Mr. Riley and Mr. Richardson here at Kington Langley in Wiltshire, manicuring their lawns for about the 47th time this season. It's the grand English gardens, like those of Capability Brown, that always get noticed. Our own front gardens just get overlooked, when in fact they're open to the public too, in a way. Gardening isn't all show. It brings out such inventiveness in people, so much care and work and love. The results are some of the most astonishing gardens you'll ever see. Don't think it's always a bed of roses either. There has to be an element of competition sometimes, even in the streets of Dagon. Today is the day of judgment. Let's have a look here, Peter, first, before we, we go in. Yes, that's... Uh, he's got a marvellous show here. Mm -hmm. Even the geraniums in the ivy, you see, look, and the roses running through there. It's very effective, isn't it? He lights this up every night now. Yes, yes. Well, the cultivation... Let's stop the path, mm -hmm. Peter. The cultivation is very good. The judges assess the best-kept garden in the London borough of Barking. This one belongs to Mr and Mrs Mick Miller. Well, the layout's very good. The Lavelli and the Alisman, the marigolds with the begonias oh, blend in very yeah. well, don't they? Yeah. I think they must give him 23 for his layout. There's very few yeah. blemishes there. Yeah. Now the perennials. Perennial. Geraniums. There's the ferns. Has he got new carnations? And, uh, and, no, there's new carnations mm -hmm. here. Um, mm -hmm. Fuchsias. For those, we can uh, give him 13 again, Peter. And the lawn. Now, yes, well, well the that, lawn that's, is exceptionally yeah, it's eight, good. Uh, there's a bit of power here and there, mm -hmm. but it's, uh, it's, um, it's quite good. I think we'd yeah. give him 9 out of 10. Well, don't forget, it hasn't had the rain on it this year. No. Year. And the rockery. Mm. I think we'd give him 4 out of 5 for the rockery. So Okay. Yeah. 80. 80. Uh, 88. Yeah, yes, 88 is great. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's it. That's 10 more than what we gave you. Yes, that's right. Yes, yes. Well, we've won the London Garden Society for the last eight to nine years, I believe, which is uh, for us medium sized garden. And the local Barking Council won. If we get it this year, it'll be six years. You know, we thought, well, if we can win the GLC one, which was quite a big area, it took out all the GLC estates in. If we can win that, we can win the barking one. So we carried on from there. And who does most of the gardening? You or your wife? Well, we argue about this. I well. say I do, <laughs> but uh, I do most of the deadheading and on most of the watering because those hanging baskets when it's hot they have to be watered twice a day. Well, I don't do none of that. I water the lawn and do the pruning and uh, general maintenance. But um, Mick cuts the grass, won't let me touch it. Mustn't breathe on it. He's his baby. Well, I feed it with a special formula which I mix myself, which I uh, I'm not saying what that is. So, uh, but basically it's hard work. In Wiltshire, Miss Bridget Park has a garden to relax and potter about in. One's whole point of starting this garden really was a sort of therapeutic thing because when one comes back exhausted from cooking, which I do for my living, I find it super to come back and mow the lawn or perhaps turn the hose pipe on, water the vegetables and things like that. But I never wanted it to be something that I was going to have to worry about continually. And so I then thought, well, the only thing to do is to grow everything absolutely higgledy-piggledy. My friends were a bit inclined to call it organised chaos. I don't think it's very organised. And so I plant all the borders as close to they can. And although they're full of weeds, you don't really see them. And so with any luck, the general effect is a lot of colour, and colour running all through the year, um, which I find is fun. 
I think it all started really about 12 years ago when I bought this little tiny derelict cottage. First year, one started on trying to get the lawn going a little bit. Since I have great theories if the lawn's tidy and mown, um, everything else looks slightly better. It doesn't, but it's <laughs> the general appearance is slightly better. And then gradually one did different bits from pinching little cuttings out of one's friend's garden and one's friend's super giving one little bit. And really it evolved from that. You don't need to be in the countryside to create a country garden. Some people manage right in the middle of the city. In a mews near Knightsbridge, Mrs. Cote gardens on the pavement. The effect that I'm trying to get is of an English cottage country garden. That's to say, although it is contrived, it mustn't look contrived. So I get my effect mainly by using silver plants as a background and then placing against them because they are a foil for colours. A series of coloured plants which have all have a relationship with each other. It's not just anything here and there because then you'll find the thing is out of balance and it's like a painting. Actually I got this idea some years ago when Hardy Amos talking on Woman's Hour about the well-dressed woman in those days of elegance when people didn't wear screaming colours, everything was gentle and soft and he said a really well-dressed woman wears three colours and one must not startle you must not be startled but they must blend and do things to each other and this illustrates the theme, the idea which is behind my um, assortment of colours and shows you quite clearly that pansy looks far more beautiful against the pink and linked up with this dark one here. You see the same sort of colours and yet that blue plays a part in it. It makes this deep and rich and the same applies to all these pinks here and here is a pink coming out. This is one of my lucky strikes. I didn't know what that was going to be and that picks up that colour and so the idea is um, to use colour not as an absolute thing, but relative. Colours must be relative. And if they are carefully um, matched together, put together, um, the beauty of each one is enhanced. Harmony. The town dweller's memory of the country garden, the dream he tries to recreate. But this is the real thing. It's at Great Two in Oxfordshire. How long have you lived in this cottage, Mrs. Coleman? Oh, just over 50 years. And what was the garden like when you first came here? Oh, terrible. You couldn't call it a garden. The ashes were nearly in the doorway. A great 